video of the spring decluttering series. So far we have decluttered our desk and workspace and our living space. And I don't know about you, but I already feel so much lighter and more energized and motivated. I feel like we could just end the series here, honestly, but we won't because today we have to declutter our closets. I actually decluttered my closet last year, but I feel like I need to do it again because I've noticed that whenever I go into my closet, I have a few favorite things that I reach for and I have to shove aside everything else to dig out the few items that I'm always wearing. Before we start with the video, you should join me and clean out your closet. For every spring decluttering video in this series, we've also been doing a community challenge on the Vibly app. So if you click the link in the description, you can join me and our Bliss Bean family. So my first tip that I want to start with today is to know your priorities and your values. And I know that's super vague, so allow me to explain. I don't think it's wrong to have a lot of clothes. I just think it's a problem when you have a lot of clothes that you're not wearing and are just kind of not only taking up physical space, but mental space and just being a weight on your shoulders. So before you start, I think you should really try to understand your personal relationship with clothing and fashion and I'll use myself as an example to illustrate this. I really really admire people who truly seem like they love fashion, like live and breathe it. People who will wear short skirts or uncomfortable fabrics and just suffer through the day because they truly love the art of it and they love expressing themselves in that way. I like following these people and seeing their outfits but personally comfort is super duper important to me and so while I do like wearing clothes that I think look nice I also like to keep it simple and I'm not really interested in putting together super creative outfits or having a huge wardrobe to experiment with. And so I guess what I'm saying is approach this process with a realistic mindset, not an aspirational one. If comfort is super important to you, focus on that. If you have a job where you have to present yourself in a really professional way, then make sure you have clothes for that. And if you really love fashion and want a huge wardrobe to play around with, own that. Just like in the other decluttering videos, if you're overwhelmed by how much stuff you have, just reach in, grab one thing, and make a decision about it. You can try it on, see how it fits, ask yourself some questions like what condition is it in, where can you wear it, is it practical, is it something you wear often, but I do think that Marie Kondo's one simple question, does it spark joy, kind of sums up all of those questions in one, so just listen to your gut. Are you excited about having this in your closet or no? I don't know about you, but trying on a lot of clothes sometimes brings up some unkind thoughts about myself. So before you start this process, arm yourself with some positive thoughts and remind yourself of how beautiful you are. As I was making these piles, I found that in order to not get frustrated with the whole process overall, it was best to just make quick decisions at first, and then once I was putting stuff back into my closet, that would be another opportunity to reconsider. But in the beginning, it was best to just listen to what my gut was telling me. I'm gonna call it a day now because I have to go do some other stuff, but I have a big discard pile, a big keep pile, a very small maybe pile that I'll think about tomorrow when I have more energy. But yeah, I don't think you should overdo it when you're decluttering anything. I just spent like three hours on this process. I don't know, some people do set aside an entire day to get some sort of decluttering done, but that just exhausts me. I think it's mentally exhausting to make all these decisions, so I like to do it in small chunks over a couple of days. But I feel really, really good about how much stuff I'm discarding. I didn't count anything, but just by looking at the piles, I think I'm getting rid of about half of my stuff. And I don't think that's because I acquired a lot of stuff since the last time that I decluttered my closet, because the few things that I bought since last year, most of them I am actually keeping. I think it's just that now the second time I'm decluttering, my bar is set higher. As you're getting rid of stuff, thank the items that you part with. I think this is one part of the KonMari method that not everyone is fully on board with, but Marie Kondo does say that you should thank the items that you part with for serving their purpose for you. Because after all, you did buy them at some point because you like them, you hopefully wore them at least once. And even if not, even if it was just a hand-me-down that you actually never wanted to have in your closet, just just have an attitude of gratitude and say thank you. I'm gonna go do some non-decluttering related stuff now, but I will see you tomorrow because we're gonna get this done. I am wearing the same sweater because all of my other clothes are in big piles, but it is day two. 
one of my tips is to have fun with the process. So I don't think you should necessarily try to get rid of everything that you haven't worn in a while. Maybe it was just hiding and now that you found it, you can show it some more love. So I had this dress that because of its color was unfortunately at the very back of my closet. But once I found it, I tried it on and I really liked it. So now I'm excited to actually give it some more use. The key word there though is excited. You should be excited to wear it again if you're dreading the thought of having to try and incorporate it into your daily outfits, then it's probably time to let it go. And you can always have a test run. You don't have to get this whole process done in just one day. Maybe you have a box that is definitely keep, a box that is definitely don't keep, and then a maybe box. And over the next few weeks, you try on those items and see what it feels like to wear them for a couple of hours. I wanna show you some of the items that I'm keeping and getting rid of. This dress, I love this dress. If you were following me when I was traveling in Europe in 2019, this was one of the very, very few things that I brought with me because I tried to pack everything in a carry-on. I wore this dress all the time but because of all that wearing it actually has like an armpit hole in it now so I'm gonna need to learn how to sew or something because I do not want to let go of this this sweatshirt is probably my favorite that I've ever had this is from my school newspaper and I think I got this my sophomore year of high school as soon as I got it I was like the color is perfect it matches my eyes the fit is perfect the fabric is perfect this hoodie is the one and I have kept it for years and years so I was right um in terms of what I'm throwing away just a lot of stuff that during my last declutter I was like yeah I, I could wear this and then I didn't so for example I actually loved wearing these pants in high school so thank you for serving your purpose pants but at the moment I feel like the checkered pattern just does not fit with other stuff that I have in my wardrobe or my current style so this sweater also that I actually wore in my desk decluttering video just two videos ago it's fine it's a fine sweater I forced myself to wear it because I was not wearing it enough but it just the fit is a little bit awkward and I don't really enjoy wearing it because of that this sweater too god I don't who sewed this sweater I like the color and just looking at it it looks like something I would really like but then I put it on and it just feels like a bag on my body Body. This sweater I got so much wear out of in high school, but I don't know, I just feel like I outgrew stripes. I'm not a huge fan of stripes anymore, so sorry, sweater. The rest of the stuff I'm getting rid of pretty much follows that pattern. It's either not quite my style, I was trying to make it fit my style, but it was not working, or it doesn't fit quite right, which made me never want to wear it, because as I said, comfort is very important to me. So, let's move on to actually doing something with all this stuff. <laughs> So the first thing I did was I went through the discard pile and I made two sub piles. One for stuff that I thought I could sell on Poshmark and then the other one for stuff that I would donate to a thrift store. And then with the keep pile, I took all of the clothes hangers out of my closet and started putting stuff back in rainbow order, of course. And actually, as I was putting stuff back, I ended up deciding to discard some of the stuff that I initially thought I was gonna keep. So as I said before, this part of the process is just a really good chance to give each decision a second thought. Shoes are an area I feel pretty good about. I don't think I need to declutter any of these. I was trying to act like it wasn't heavy, but this is heavy. I have Nike, some sandals, boots that I wear when I want to feel powerful, heels, smaller heels. I love these shoes. These shoes I just bought last year. Doc Martin sandals. And there's one pair that I have to go get from downstairs. <laughs> these. I literally bought these shoes because Jungkook wore them and it was one of the few things that BTS has worn that I could actually afford and that I liked. So I could not pass up that opportunity. Before it gets dark outside, let's talk about moving forward with your newly decluttered closet. So first of all, I would say have a to buy list. This applies not just to clothing, but to buying almost anything. Whenever you wanna buy something, even if you can afford it, even if it takes just one click to have it on your doorstep the next day, make yourself wait, put it on a list, write down the date that you initially wanted the thing, the price, and then maybe set a reminder for a week or so to check back on it and see if you still want that thing. So I think there are three benefits to this. First of all, a lot of times you come back to it and you realize you don't even want the thing anymore, so that's a win. Second, if you do still want it, that gives you a little bit more patience, a little more time to look for some sales or for some coupons so you can get a better deal on buying it. And then number three, I think it's just 
satisfying to put something on a to buy list because you're not just saying like nope can't buy this I'm a minimalist now you're kind of you're giving it a chance you're saying maybe we'll consider it and we'll get back to it and for me that always satisfies that initial desire to buy something and remember if you do come back to it and ultimately decide that you don't want to buy it you just saved some money whatever the cost of that thing is that's how much you saved so celebrate that my second tip is to surround yourself with minimal fashion inspiration so there's nothing wrong with following fashion accounts but if we're trying to build a good habit like buying less clothes then we can help ourselves by making the environment around us conducive to that good habit so maybe instead of following lots and lots of fashion accounts accounts that maybe never rewear the same thing twice see if you can find some minimalist fashion accounts and just follow a few of them and see how these people get creative with smaller closets and mix and match things to create different outfits. And decluttering your closet doesn't mean that you'll never go shopping again, but when you do, try to visualize how each piece that you're considering buying will fit into your closet. So ideally, anything new that you buy will work with multiple outfits that you already have the ingredients for in your closet. Definitely beware of items that you can only visualize in one specific outfit, or especially things that you would actually have to buy more new stuff for in order to put together an outfit. And finally, we talked about having a maybe box or a maybe pile to test some stuff out while you're decluttering. Another thing you can do is have kind of like a long-term maybe box. So if you've listened to the Minimalist podcast or watched their documentaries, then you might know about the concept of a packing party. So a packing party is what Ryan from The Minimalist did. He packed up everything in his house as if he were moving, but he wasn't actually moving. What he did was over the next few weeks, I don't know what the timeline was, whenever he needed something, he would go to the box and pull it out and at the end of that period of time anything that was still in the boxes he knew that he could let go of and he ended up getting rid of all that stuff so you can apply that concept to your closet whenever you're unsure about an item you can put it in your maybe box for a couple of months maybe set a reminder on your phone to go through that box every couple of months look through it and see like did you miss those items at all while they were in the maybe box out of sight if you didn't even notice that they were gone then you can probably feel good about letting them go. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've been enjoying the decluttering series so far. I found it very satisfying to declutter my workspace and my room and my closet. And I can't wait for the last video of the series. As always, you can head to the Vibly app to share your own closet decluttering experience. Let us know in the comments if- Bruh, I was almost done. Let us know in the comments if you have any tips or advice for decluttering your closet or then maintaining a decluttered, minimal, and functional closet. Give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you next week. Bye!